We are just days away from the 2024 San Francisco Giants season getting underway, and there are still some really key, I don't want to necessarily call them competitions, but there is a competition at shortstop, Nick Ahmed or Marco Luciano, and then the door is open for Luis Matos to make this opening day roster, and then there's a bunch of pitching spots up for grabs. We're going to discuss all of those battles next. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on this show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday, talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, been hosting Locked on Giants for over five years now, and I'm a lifelong fan. Thank you for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. Check us out there if you have not already. Please hit that subscribe button, thumbs up button, five star button, whatever you could do to help us out. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. One thing I just quickly want to say is that not only do we cover your team every day, but now we are giving you instant episodes after every single game. Check out the Locked On Giants postcast right here on the Locked On Giants podcast feed, as well as streaming on the Locked On Bay Area YouTube channel. Get rapid reaction to all the biggest moments with the Locked On Giants postcast. So starting on opening day and then throughout the season, you're going to get instant reaction on this postcast that's going to show up on this feed, on not on YouTube, but everywhere else. Uh, on the Bay Area YouTube channel, um, and it's not going to be me. And so just a heads up that that's going to be happening. And then I will, of course, the next day have the regular show. So just to give you a heads up, we'll be mentioning it all week. Anyway, jumping into the point, the main point of today's show, which is um, there are the there are open roster, there are spots available on this roster for the Giants. And the, the number one um, competition, so to speak, is at shortstop, I think, with... Nick Ahmed and Marco Luciano. And the reason it for a long time didn't even really seem like much of a competition because Marco Luciano was struggling so much in spring. Nick Ahmed was doing so well. And I know you don't, I've preached, you know, spring training results don't really matter, but they do in certain cases when a guy has not proven himself at the major league level and he's also then struggling in spring. And that's the case of Marco Luciano. Versus an established veteran in Nick Ahmed, who then is having a torrid spring, displaying his abilities defensively. But um, Luciano has gotten hot at the right time for him. And just to give you a sense of how these guys have done, I mean, Nick Ahmed, again, these are spring training stats. Take them with a tiny little grain of salt. That's how insignificant they are but Nick Ahmed has hit 379 486 on base 690 slugging he's just been a monster 17 percent strikeout rate 14 percent walk rate Marco Luciano all in all I mean all of a sudden he's got an above average uh kind of had above average performance in the spring and one of the thing that one of the things that jumps out to me a lot is that his walk rate is over 20 percent He's walked in more than one out of every five plate appearances this spring in 49 trips to the plate, hitting 237, ho hum, not very impressive, 388 on base percentage. And so the plate discipline of Luciano, also of Luis Matos, who we will definitely talk about next, um, and even guys like Casey Schmidt, like the improvements in plate discipline have been very impressive. And then Luciano's hit for some power as well. The one thing that does stand out quite negatively is that the strikeout rate's like 33%, which is a continuation of a trend that we've seen basically since he got to double A uh, when he struck out 30% of the time in double A last year, 
36% of the time in AAA, 38% of the time in the major leagues, and now 33% of the time in camp. And major league average, major league average is like 22, 23%. And so if you're up over 30 and we're talking minor leagues, we're talking spring training, um, then it doesn't really bode well for it coming like way down when you get to the major leagues, right? So um, basically, let's let's hear from Bob Melvin on this competition. So Melvin said to um, a reporter for MLB.com that the competition is, quote, still ongoing, end quote, and could come down to the wire. Um, he says, quote, it's a little harder on Luciano because he got off to such a slow start, meaning he wasn't playing for a while maybe his at bats weren't great to begin but now they're much better and he's playing really solidly in the field too and then he continued on Luciano saying he's playing his best baseball right now credit to him for sticking with it and playing hard now he's getting the fruits of his hard work and so that kind of leaves us up in the air but to say that the competition is ongoing and that it could come down to the wire is definitely interesting, and and the fact of the matter is, uh, Luciano is on the forty man roster. Nick Ahmed is not, and so that that's part of the calculation is that you'd have to add um, the forty man is full after the signing of Blake Snell. They do need to eventually deal with Joey Bart, who either has to make the opening day roster or be taken off the forty man roster. Essentially, um, so there are definitely like spots that can open up here but the other factor is that Luciano has minor league options whereas a player like Nick Ahmed uh, as a longtime veteran is no longer someone who can just be optioned although he did sign a minor league deal but there's the possibility we don't know this often doesn't get reported that he could have an opt-out in his deal and so meaning like if he doesn't make the team he could just bounce and then you're I don't want to say stuck with Marco Luciano because I'm a big fan of Marco Luciano and his long-term prospects, but um, the depth, like you could just keep Nick Ahmed, have him on the roster to start the season, kind of let that play out while you let Luciano just continue, hopefully to stay really hot in AAA. And if Ahmed struggles and Luciano's killing it in AAA, you make the move then. Like there's no net there's not necessarily a sense of urgency to have Luciano be the guy from day one. So I remain I think that it's gonna be Ahmed because they can simply option Luciano. But I'm far less certain now than I was a week or two weeks ago because of how strong Luciano has come on down the stretch in spring training here. And I mean he's been red hot and just drawing walks and hitting for power. He hit a monster home run the other day. So I wouldn't be totally shocked. I mean, if Nick Ahmed would accept an assignment to AAA, that kind of, you could have Luciano start the year in the majors and then have Nick Ahmed as depth in AAA. But I'm not like a lot of veteran players who sign these minor league deals like Ahmed have opt outs in their contracts where if they don't make the team, they can just leave and sign with a team that will actually play them in the majors. So that just totally remains to be seen here as we stand on Monday the 25th with opening day coming up on Thursday. So that's going to be something fascinating to see how it plays out. Another fascinating thing is going to be, does Luis Matos make this team? There's an avenue for him. It has to do with an injury to another player. So we will get into that whole situation momentarily and before we do. Today's episode is brought to you in part by our good, good friends over at FanDuel. Say goodbye to those busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads. Money lines, you can even pick who's going to win it all. If it were me, and if I were a new time customer, with this offer, I would just look for the heaviest favorite, place my $5 bet on them, knowing that if I win, I get 200 in bonus bets, and you can do the exact same thing. So check it out. 
Uh, FanDuel.com slash locked on. Place that $5 bet if you win 200 in bonus bets. Again, just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Okay, as promised, we are going to get into the Luis Matos situation because it's it's different than the Marco Luciano situation, but it's also a young player who is making a push for a major league roster spot to start the season. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow. We we I got confused last week and I said we were going to be doing a mailbag. I thought the episode was coming out on Thursday, but it came out on Friday. We may we're going to do a mailbag at some point, I think before the season starts, but there's also a lot else planned. We're going to be talking with Javier Reyes from Locked on Padres to preview the season opening series and we're going to be maybe talking to Locked on MLB uh, with Sully to preview the Giants season. So just be on the lookout for a large amount of hot content in the next few days. And analysis of this little series the Giants get to have against the A's in Oakland and San Francisco over the next couple days. By the way, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? That's definitely the case for me when I have those channels on. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Fire, excuse me, Amazon Fire TV channels app of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. So getting to the Luis Matos situation, basically, I I have struggled with this one for a few weeks. And it's basically like Luis Matos, has, he put on a bunch of muscle. That was like one thing I really wanted to see coming into the season was a stronger and thicker Matos. He came in exactly that. And he has gone on to just put that to use in spring. The dude is hitting 314, great, 375 on base, great, 667 slugging, which is a 353 isolated power. He's hit four homers. He's probably hit a bunch of doubles as well. Uh, four homers, six doubles, six singles. So 10 doubles are homers and six singles. So that's what you like to see. Um, from Matos, who is 22 years old, just turned 22 at the end of January. And, you know, there's a lot of fans out there, and I'll speak on your behalf, who think definitely that Matos should have a roster spot over a number of Giants outfielders, including Michael Conforto, Mike Yastrzemski, and Austin Slater. Basically everybody except jung Hu Lee. And while I understand where you're coming from, it's a little bit more... It's not that simple. It's not that simple because you're paying Michael Conforto $18 million. I get it. It's a sunk cost. But also, he's got a track record of being a good major league player. We didn't really see that last year. But are you going to just cut $18 million assuming you're going to get another mediocre version of Michael Conforto? Again, diminishing your depth, right? Because... If you go with Matos and he struggles, then Conforto's gone. You're like, you're not. I just don't see them cutting Michael Conforto just to get Matos onto the opening day roster, because the thing is, injuries happen. Like Matos was in, he finished 2022 in High A, and last year started the season in Double A and ended up playing. You know, having 250 plus plate appearances in the major leagues due to performance in the minors and injuries in the majors and so it happens every year where opportunities arise and that opportunity may already be here to start the season with Austin Slater continuing to deal with an elbow issue so Slater had surgery on his right elbow on October 11th 
So like right after the season ended, um, he made his Cactus League deb- debut on February 24th at designated hitter, but he did not appear again in a game until March 9th after suffering a setback with his elbow. Um, so then this is coming from MLB, MLB.com again, and it was this most recent Friday. They said his health came into question again on Friday when he was scratched from the Giants split squad lineup in Mesa after reporting more soreness in his surgically repaired elbow. So yeah, from Friday the 22nd, this is coming from Shayna Rubin of the San Francisco Chronicle. She says Slater's dealing with some elbow soreness in his surgically repaired arm. He's day to day and it's possible he isn't ready for the opener, according to Bob Melvin. And then Shayna says that would that would open up a path for Luis Matos to make the team. And I 100% agree. And Melvin said on Luis Matos, quote, this is per MLB.com, he's done everything. It just depends on the Slater situation. And so I agree. It doesn't depend on are we going to cut Michael Conforto. It has nothing to do with Mike Yastrzemski. And also Mike Yastrzemski is underrated. I'm not saying he's a superstar, but he's a solid average or a little above average major league player. Defense matters. Base running matters. Batting average is not the only offensive metric that matters, right? Like he hits for power when he hits, right? Batting average just tells us what what percent of the time do you get a hit when you put the ball in play, essentially, because it's not even accounting for walks. Um, it's also not account. Well, it's not even accounting for like sack fly. Batting average is so flawed in so many ways. <laughs> and so if you're just just don't only look at batting average to evaluate Mike Yastrzemski. Um, look at the the slugging uh, as an example. He's He hits for power, and he also plays a mean right field. He's a capable center fielder. And then Slater is a monster against left-handed pitching. Some people, for whatever reason, like don't want to believe that, but I have the numbers to fully back it up. He's just been one of the best hitters against left-handed pitching in baseball for the last several seasons. He's got one of the best pinch hit. He, he literally has the best pinch hit, like OPS, weighted runs created plus, in the history of baseball, minimum 100 pinch hit plate appearances. I mean, that's like shocking. To I mean, the fact that I can say that, and then there's a bunch, there's a huge contingency of fans who like say, just get rid of this guy. I don't get that at all, but uh, to each their own. But I, I do understand the desire to ha- to see more of Matos. And I think when all is said and done this season, Matos is going to end up playing a lot. It's just a matter of does he make that opening day rostered or does he not? And notably in this game tonight in Oakland, so I'll be w- watching closely. Like this is one of the things, first of all, Marco Luciano is apparently starting at shortstop tonight. That doesn't necessarily mean anything because Tomorrow, which is the last day of exhibition games, it could be Ahmed at shortstop, and that could tell you that, you know, it's Ahmed's job. Like, it looks like Luciano will probably start tonight. Ahmed will probably start on Tuesday. Um, But notably, this is one of the main things I'll be watching besides Marco Luciano defensively and offensively, but Slater playing in right field tonight. And so, testing that elbow. And... I don't know. I mean, I just I don't think it would be the worst thing in the world to kind of slow play Slater, who said um, to reporters at some point in this uh, to Shayna Rubin um, that he said the quality of at bats I'm not super concerned about. It's more about feeling healthy and being able to bounce back the next day, which at this point I haven't been able to do. So, yeah, I mean, maybe he plays today and then they see how he bounces back the next day, but it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world at all um, to just slow play Slater, let him get fully healthy because he's an important player, like I just said, but that would open the door for a Luis Matos to be on the roster. He probably still wouldn't start because Slater's role, he would be taking Slater's role, which isn't starting, but at the same time, you have to understand a lot of players break in this way where they're like part-time players that then they if they really perform well in that part-time role they get a bigger role and then all of a sudden they're you can't take them out of the lineup and that's how they establish themselves. So that's I mean he Matos is 22 
minor league options. They're not just going to platoon him forever, but he might start out in a platoon to start the season. It's, the Padres have a bunch of righties, so I don't know. I mean, and also guys need days off, and so even to start the season, like you give Matos a start, you know, in one of the games to start the year, if it's in San Diego and Slater's on the injured list, like you just, at least in one of those games, give Matos a start and just see what he can do and see if he can just take a job and run with it and give the Giants a a good problem to have, having too many outfielders basically and forcing their hand. So I'm super hot. Like of all, I think Matos may be their Technically, he's not a prospect anymore. He's not a rookie uh, anymore, but I am quite high on the possibilities for Luis Matos, the future for Luis Matos, and um, that's the latest. And so that's something to monitor, and it's, you know, Slater, if he has to go on the injured list or whatever, that would definitely open the, the door for Luis Matos. So coming up in just a minute, we will turn our attention to the pitching side where Honestly, that is where the most uncertainty lies of all. There are basically like four spots that we don't know who who who's going to be taking up those spots out of 13 players probably um, is what they'll go with on the pitching side. So we will get into it in just a minute. And before we do... Today's episode is brought to you in part by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all in the latest in the sports world. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more, not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and even cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you really should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. All right, here we go. We are going to do our best to uh, try to figure out what the heck is going to happen with the pitching staff to start the 2024 season as we are just a few days away from opening day. Thanks again for making Lockdown Giants your first listen every day. Every day is, like I said, I'm not exactly sure what's coming tomorrow, but it's one of a number of things. Crossover with Lockdown MLB. I think the crossover with Javi is gonna, from Lockdown Padres is going to be coming out on either Wednesday or Thursday, so that wouldn't be tomorrow. We've also got mailbag questions that I want to maybe get to before the start of the season. And we're also going to be watching these games tonight and tomorrow uh, with the exhibition series against the A's. So be on the lookout for that. And just again, a reminder about Postcast with um, Eric. Eric Engel, I think, is the host. I need... I've met him. I just am blanking on his name right now. Good dude. Going to be hosting um, on this on this feed. You're going to find these shows after every single Giants game. But that's just going to be a new thing. And then my show will continue as normal. So it'll just be more content for you available immediately after. Not necessarily all 162 games, but most of them. And that's going to come on like right after the games. And so be on the lookout for that. On YouTube, it'll be on the Locked On Bay Area, Locked On Sports Bay Area YouTube channel, not Locked On Giants. But on the re- on the regular feed, it'll be Locked On Giants. So that's gonna start on Thursday and continue all and indefinitely. It's gonna continue. So anyway, the pitching side. This is where I'm most confused and least certain. And I think that there's a pretty strong argument to make that Juan Sanchez is gonna make this. Uh, pitching staff. He is a left-handed pitcher. 
Bob Melvin said he's come out of the pack a little bit to give himself a chance here, and we're taking a hard look at him. Um, guys from the left side are important. He continues to perform well. He's still here, or yeah, he's here still. Another guy that's got a chance to make the team. And so, I mean, it's just like simple deduction, right? Like he, the, he's the only left-handed pitcher left in camp besides Taylor Rogers. And so if you want a second lefty in your bullpen, then it's going to have to be Juan Sanchez. They had other guys, but they, um, Ethan Small got hurt. I think Eric Miller is on the 40 man and he got optioned. I believe Miller is on the 40 man and he got optioned. Yes, he did. And so it looks to me like Juan Sanchez is your kind of second left-handed pitcher. Sanchez is 23, uh, left-handed reliever, I should say. He's 23 years old. He was, um, he first came into the organization in 2018 in rookie ball. And yeah, I mean, this spring he's been phenomenal. Again, spring stats, caveats, all that. But in the minor leagues, I mean, I look at his performance in Triple A last season. He pitched in Double A and Triple A, and he just was really able to limit home runs, which is impressive in in that environment. It's a very hitter friendly environment. Um, put up a four two six ERA. I, I think league average in in the Pacific Coast League is like five or something. So that's a better than average uh, performance there. Two three nine ERA in Double A really able to limit home runs throughout his entire minor league career. Uh, he's never had a season where he's come even particularly close to allowing a home run per nine innings. So good stuff. I've seen him pitch a little bit this spring. Not a lot of Giants games have been televised, but these next two games, I'm sure we'll see an appearance from Juan Sanchez. And so that's another thing I'll be watching for. He's had a 57% ground ball rate this spring. Small sample, eight games, 10 innings, but uh, he probably takes up one of those 13 spots. And we do know that Blake Snell is not going to be ready for opening day. So don't expect Blake Snell to be on the opening day roster. And so that opens up two spots in the starting rotation, potentially. So you've got Logan Webb. I think they even, I think it was Amy G who who tweeted this out and I didn't see anybody else tweet it out. I kind of wasn't on Twitter over the weekend, but I also didn't get a media update from the Giants. So I don't know where she got it, but I assume it's correct that Logan Webb's going to be number one, obviously, to start the season, especially with Blake Snell not ready. He's not going to go on the IL. He's just not ready. Or would he? Can he? I, I, I don't know how they deal with that. But um, number two would be Kyle Harrison. Number two starter to start the season. So that's you wish you got Blake Snell in here a little bit sooner so he'd be ready, but it is what it is. Number three, Jordan Hicks. And then after that, it's a couple of, I mean, literally the Giants list to be determined as their fourth starter of the season. So Keaton Wynn is in that mix. I think Mason Black is in that mix. You've got Landon Roop in that mix. So I think that probably Wynn and Black have the inside track to kind of be those fourth and fifth starters to start the season. Once Snell comes in, then it pushes everyone back and it gets a little better, you know, and Alex Cobb is not that far away from returning, um, like maybe a month at the most. I mean, it seems like he's getting much pretty darn close. So, and then of course you've got Duvall, Rogers, Rogers, Luke Jackson, Ryan Walker. Those guys are like locks. And then I think uh, Juan Sanchez, kind of a lock almost at this point. But again, someone I'll be looking out for to see if, in fact, he does make that team. I don't know what they'll do. They might just go with one lefty if like Juan Sanchez got injured. I don't know what they would do there. But other than that, I think Dalton Jeffries has performed really well this spring. Former first rounder and has just dealt with a lot of injuries, but... He's been very, very impressive this spring. Every time I've seen him uh, just kind of attacking the strike zone and just generally being effective. And uh, again, he's got some pedigree, former A when Bob Melvin was there. So there's some familiarity and that gives him 
you know, a pretty decent shot, I think. And besides that, I think there's maybe one spot that you could argue is still open after that. Not Tristan Beck, because he's going to be on the injured list. Not Sean Jelly, injured list. But uh, let's see, as I look through the potential pitching options, um, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I guess Landon Roop. That would probably be my guess. So I'd guess Keaton Wynn, Mason Black, Landon Roop, Juan Sanchez. These are a lot of new names and a lot. We've discussed how you'd have to add a lot of guys to the 40 man here. So you'd have to make some surprising DFAs, a trade. Again, the Joey Bart situation has yet to resolve, but that needs to re- be resolved by Thursday. Um, and so, yeah, a lot, a lot to follow here as we approach opening day and we will cover it every step of the way here on Locked on Giants. I can't wait. I'm super pumped. Um, but, you know, there's still a lot to be determined. And that's it's kind of exciting, I guess. Anyway, that is all the time we have for today. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. Every dayers, as you have heard me say, we're going to be doing a lot of other stuff throughout the rest of the week leading up to opening day. So just be on the lookout. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspic. Check me out on Twitter or X at Ben Kaspic, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review, smashing that thumbs up button, whatever you can do to help us out. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who's done so already. I really can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Thanks again for listening today. You are now Locked on Giants.